What does it mean to be a citizen scientist? And how can you be one? Um, I would say that I'm a citizen scientist. I'm a human being who avoided science in high school and in college. But just because I don't have a PhD and just because I'm not associated with any university doesn't mean that I can't do experiments and figure things out. And that's what I want to help empower you to do, to feel more confident, trusting in your own curiosity and your own exploration. One of the things that I've really observed as a teacher of biofield tuning, which is a somewhat subtle practice, is that many, many people simply don't trust their own senses. They don't trust their own guidance. They don't trust their own ability to look within and find the answers or even a willingness to experiment and see what happens. One example that comes to mind is I've been asked many times, how much salt should you put in the bath after you receive a biofield tuning session? And I really encourage you to see what happens when you put in one, when you put in two, if you're feeling like putting in three someday. One time I was taking a bath and decided to put in some fresh cracked pepper along with the salt. And boy, did that make me sweat a lot. And I never would have known that, that it's actually an Ayurvedic detox process to use black pepper. So trusting your own willingness to maybe do it wrong or mess things up, to be sloppy, to be uncertain, and uh, to learn from that. So there are many places where you can engage being a citizen scientist. Certainly one way is with tuning forks. That's how I've done it. It's kind of difficult to hurt yourself with tuning forks. So that makes me think that I think the number one rule of being a citizen scientist should be do no harm to yourself or others. Don't blow things up. Don't burn anything. Don't, don't hurt anyone to the very best of your ability. And then safety first really is the number one creed of being a citizen scientist. When we go into unfamiliar territory, we want to be cautious and we want to be present and we want to be listening and feeling, having all of our senses open so that we are taking in the information that we need to stay safe. You can do it in the kitchen, throw away your cookbooks and start seeing what kind of inspiration comes to you. You can do it in any art form that you might be working in. Start playing around with new materials or new ways of putting things together. Sometimes it's just a matter of stepping back, widening the lens and asking what else is possible and then trusting what drops in. The way that I've been guided as a citizen scientist is listening to my own inner teacher. And I believe that every single one of us has the resource of the inner teacher available to us. So I want to encourage you as we go through this month to pay attention to places where you might be thinking inside of a box that you don't need to be in. Maybe your curiosity wants to lead you somewhere. And who knows, it might lead you to inventing something or creating something that leads to the betterment of humanity. Don't put yourself and your own dreams and visions and inspirations down because you don't have a degree or you're not affiliated with this or that. Many, many of the great things that come along that change humanity come from ordinary citizen scientists. So I encourage you to begin to develop your own.